in this <coughs> section we will be discussing about the speed governing system of the steam turbine we will cover mechanical governing hydraulic governing electro hydraulic governing throttle governing and <coughs> nozzle governing Total governing of the steam turbine is most popular and easiest way to control the turbine speed. When the turbine speed controls its output speed by varying the quantity of steam entering to the entire turbine phase, the turbine nozzle is called the total governing. In this system, a centrifugal governor is driven by the main shaft of the turbine by a gear arrangement. A control valve is used to control the direction of the oil flow, which is supplied by the pipe. The servo motor or relay valve has a piston which moves towards left or right depending on the pressure of the oil flow through the pipes. This cylinder has, is connected to a needle which moves inside the nozzle. <clears throat> In this slide, we are going to discuss the mechanical governing of the steam turbine without oil <coughs> relay. On the left hand side, you can see that there is this shaft is connected to the turbine shaft and when turbine shaft is increasing, this fly ball moves up and then it starts closing the wall. When <coughs> turbine speed will go down, then this wall will close this will close the wall. So actually this is the actual arrangement. This is your turbine shaft through the gear. This spindle is connected and two fly balls are mounted here. When the turbine speed goes up, the fly balls will start moving out and this sleeve will move up and then it will close the valve inside. In this drawing, the turbine speed has when the turbine speed has increases this ball will start to go inside and as a result it will this sleeve will go down and it will open the valve steam valve to pass more steam when the turbine is <coughs> when such there is a load decrease in the turbine in that case the turbine speed will go up this fly valve weight will move out this sleeve will go up and it will start closing the valve up to the extent required. <clears throat> this is the, <clears throat> what is shown here is a, a schematic of governing system with while relay. So in this case, <clears throat> this sleeve is connected like this. From here, we set the speed and this shaft is connected here, which moves up and down as per the movement of the sleeve. While to operate the cylinder piston, while to operate the piston comes from here and if the turbine speed is increasing, this while will go up and push this piston to close the valve. If the turbine speed is re reduced, then in that case, the while this oil will come from here, it will come here and then it will push the cylinder, <clears throat> this piston up and this valve will open more as per the requirement. <clears throat> so basically, <clears throat> turbine governing system is a method which we are using to maintain a set constant speed of the turbine. Now, this the importance of this method is that turbine can be maintained at a set constant speed irrespective of the variation <clears throat> in place. It gives a constant set speed as far as possible under varying load conditions. The different types of the turbine governing governors are throttle governing and nozzle governing. <clears throat> what you see here on the right hand side that when these valves open, when this valve open, the steam goes from here and then increases the speed of the turbine and when the load go, is, turbine speed 
goes up due to reduction in load this valve will start throttling and control the <coughs> speed so this control valve is opening as per the turbine load <coughs> The, so, we know that turbine speed is controlled by varying the load. Now, <clears throat> actually, if we talk about, this is talking about the nozzle governing and if we see the whole system, this is emergency stop valve and this is the servo motor. Mm, we will see in detail next slide with servo motor which operates, which to operates through a while called secondary while and this either lift this beam this beam or it lowers this beam there are five valves connected to this they have got different <coughs> spindle length and accordingly they will go up and down so what happens the governor senses the turbine speed and based on that <coughs> it operates turbine speed can be measured by a oil pump in this case it can be even measured electronically also and then the turbine speed is compared to the set point and then whatever changes is required that change is done <clears throat> and then the accordingly the governing system will place it according to that so <clears throat> Now, in case, of, basically most of modern turbines are using either hydraulic or electro-hydraulic governing systems and in case of turbine trip, both emergency stop valve and the control valve will close. The nozzle governing, in nozzle governing, in nozzle governing, valve to the individual nozzle to ST is throttle. In throttle governing, it is supplied to all the rows of the <coughs> nozzles together. So this is the drawing is showing the nozzle governing. You can see on the right and bottom side that there are three sections in the nozzles and there are three valves. These valves open in sequence and accordingly <coughs> increases or the valve and close also in sequence to uh, decrease the turbine speed. So each primary valve is closing according to load demand and some nozzles are active, another nozzles are in active position <clears throat> and turbines have got up to 10 nozzles but most of the cases it is 5. <clears throat> so in the nozzle governing, <clears throat> what happens? We have all, I have already explained you the entire thing in the previous slide and the turbine speed is controlled by wiring the steam flow through the turbine by positioning the nozzle valves. These valves are loaded by a spring. A spring closes the valve and when steam goes up, it opens the valve. <coughs> Governor is sensing the turbine accordingly. It is adjusted, which is explained in detail in the coming slides. Then the turbine speed is compared and accordingly the second this servo valve is operated as per that <clears throat> and the valve is repositioned. Governing can be hydraulic or electro hydraulic governing and in case the turbine trips both the emergency stop valve and all control valves will close immediately. In nozzle governing, valve to the individual nozzle to steam is throttle. In throttle governing, speed is supplied to all the first row of nozzles together. <clears throat> this arrangement shows how the hydraulic governing system works. So these are the valves and they have got a spindle of different length and they are loaded by a spring. This, this beam is moved by this spindle. <clears throat> On left hand side, this is called this is called servo motor and while secondary while comes from here and if the turbine speed is going down, this 
a spindle will move while will from from here it will push this piston and the valve will start closing if the turbine speed is going up then the this oil which is coming from here will enter from here it will push this piston down and the <coughs> valve will start closing this is emergency stop valve this is your turbine control desk <coughs> and this method is nozzle governing in some cases these beams this this is the lift beam and these are the spindle collected to this beam to lift the beam up and down and it is controlled by a torque bar through a can <coughs> no let us see the complete <coughs> details of the hydraulic governing system this is emergency stop valve and steam comes from here comes to the here steam chest here <coughs> there in this case there are five valves each valve has got different spindle length the, it is operated by this beam and this beam this spindle moving up or down is controlled by the servo motor which we will be seeing in the next slide <clears throat> now control governing oil through this filter and through the solenoid valve is coming here it moves like this and it goes to the overhead trip tester from the overhead trip tester it goes to the overhead tripping this device and if this device is not operated now uh, it is <clears throat> reset then this oil from here will pass it will come and again through the over speed trip tester it will come here to the control desk <clears throat> now a speed of the turbine is measured <clears throat> speed of the turbine is measured by a <clears throat> pressure of a pump which is connected to the turbine shaft when the turbine speed goes up automatically the oil pressure will go up that oil pressure that oil pressure will act against the governing system here and then finally depending up if the speed is more it will throttle the oil this this is called secondary oil it will throttle this secondary oil to close the valve if the turbine speed is less it will open secondary oil more and then this secondary oil will come and operate this <coughs> servo motor which will operate the valve as required <coughs> now we are going to discuss <coughs> electro hydraulic governing <coughs> in electro hydraulic governing the speed reference a speed is set as a negative voltage it is set through a potentiometer and that set point comes here this is called <coughs> summing point this is called summing point and this comes as a positive dc dc voltage here now the turbine speed is measured through a magnetic pickup and then a alternating current is generated which is connected <coughs> to a voltage negative dc voltage and this negative dc voltage is fed here and the summing point decides that whether the turbine speed is more or less and based on that whatever that difference is called error that error goes to the amplifier which is the main controller pid controller and this generates a 4 to 20 milliamp signal and immediately a feedback also comes to how much signal is generated and this goes to electro hydraulic converter where the control valve enters and depending on this 4 to 20 milliamps voltage this actuator will open the valve this this valve flow to the actuator will be open and this actuator will open the speed valve this turbine valve <coughs> steam valve to increase the turbine speed if the turbine speed is more then the negative error will be fed to the controller and again then the 
4 to 20 milliamp signal will be reduced which in result will result in slightly closing the actuator and closing the steam valve which is going to the turbine. There is a fail safe system also provided that in case this there is any problem in the center and there is too much difference between the actual turbine speed and the set speed system detects that there is some problem in the electronic system and as a result it will <coughs> lock the whole system and the previous load on the turbine will be maintained. <coughs> now <coughs> here we are going to discuss about the over speed trip system of the <coughs> turbine. The trip mechanism acts independently of the speed <coughs> control and closes the emergency stop work <coughs> to stop the steam flow to the turbine in event of over speed conditions. Consisting of <coughs> A spring loaded pin then what happens you see here what is happening that there is a spring which is processing the pressure while is coming from here and it returns here when the turbine is reset a over trip bolt is connected to the turbine and which when the turbine speed increases due to the centrifugal force this bolts comes up it hits this lever and I, when it hits this lever this goes up this goes up and the while which is coming from here gets drained so the turbine trips if <coughs> the turbine is received then this while is going down and so that's how this tripping system is working thank you very much <coughs> i have uploaded four videos on the steam turbine and for three of them already uh, the links are given Thank you very much.